Uh, let's not even dance around it, Corey. There's been a lot of questions about coaching, uh, and I think this is probably – I don't know if it's the best one, but it's the one where I want to hear your opinion on it the most. So let's go ahead yeah. and let's 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 generate discussion, courtesy of our great friends over at Cummins. Uh, as you know, everybody, every single week we showcase what we feel or I feel is probably the best question of the week that's going to be generating discussion on social media all across the FSU sphere, if you will. Um, and then we do a grand prize drawing at the end of every month. Uh, we're doing a redrawing this month uh, for the September winner because uh, we were abandoned ship by a, a subscriber, which mm. was very poor form. So with that said, let's go ahead and let's give away swag one more time. Uh oh, this is not good for this is not good TV. How do I spin this thing? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I figured it out. College education. And we everything. all know who's going to win anyway. This is predetermined. See? Oh. Pete Tingler, 81. Nice. All right. I'm going to DM you. I'm going to get your information. We're going to mail out. And also, shout out to our guy, Nick Knoll. Uh, I was waiting to get this winner squared away before we mailed out your thing. You are a winner. You'll be getting a swag bag, courtesy of our great friends over at Cummins. Give them a follow. Cummins Lifestyle. It's all one word on Instagram. So, coaching stuff, Corey. Coaching stuff, coaching stuff, coaching stuff. This one comes from Gator Kirk. So, it's cool that we're going to finally uh, – we're going to reward somebody who's been in the in the trenches with us for a long time yeah. on this program. And um, he also adds at the end of this thing, though, um, I will be at the Duke game tonight. Uh, would be awesome, he says, would be assumed. Would be awesome if I somehow got to meet Corey this Friday. So no pressure, Corey, but maybe keep your eyes out for the uh, the reptilian one. Okay, just keep yelling my name. I'll be around. The, you'll, you know what I'll look like. Come up yeah. and say hello. If you see, I don't really have a... I, I have no idea where I'm going to be before the game. I don't think I'm going to be tailgating or anything. But uh, uh, if you see me, please come say hello, Gator Kirk. That would be awesome. Try to find where media will call is Gator Kirk and just camp out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he says, why are the coaches' salaries being brought up so much by War Chant with respect to the record? If the salaries were $100,000 for each coach, would you be less happy with the results? Uh, regardless of compensation, this is not the standard. So you didn't, did you ever fire up the, Oh, sorry, Corey. I mean, that's the only reason I do this as long as so I can on. fire up the generator. Hold on. Let me, let me. All right. There we go. Okay. I mean, Corey's a company man over here. I'm, I'm just slopping things. Yeah, around. Yeah, what's going on? Right. Cummins. I apologize for that. I apologize for my partner there. That was crazy. That was, uh, that was ugly. Um, yeah, it's a fair question. I think, the reason I bring it up, the, the main reason I bring it up is um, to just remind people, number one, that Mike Norvell is not just uh, fairly compensated. Uh, he is one of what, Aslan, the five highest paid coaches in the country? Sounds about Six, right. Something yeah. like that. No. Um, the other guys in that neighborhood aren't one in five. Um, so that's not great, number one. You're getting paid a lot of money not to win games, but also more relevant to the discussions we've had for a month now, we'll continue to have throughout the rest of the season is if you're going to be making changes, well, that's a financial hit that, that your school, your university is taking. You're right. If they're making a hundred thousand, if they were getting paid like Bowden in 1982, this wouldn't be acceptable. But when you're getting paid this much money, meaning the, the university, the fan base, the collective, the boosters have all, given you this much money because they believe in you, <clears throat> you've got to have a better product than this. You that That's just the way of the world. And uh, yeah, I mean, I probably bring it up too much, but you know, you got a 60, what is it? $65 million buyout. Alex Atkins probably has a three and a half million dollar buyout. Fuller's 2 million. Um, all these other coaches are one and a half million or 1.7 million because they all have multi-year contracts. Um, so that's a lot of money. I, I just said a lot of money like uh, that, that, will have to be paid for somehow if and when you decide to make changes. I, I almost am less, of, I don't want to offend that, the to, His question is good. Like, would you be less happy with the result if they were getting paid a hundred thousand? Uh, yeah. I want to be as mad. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. Would you be you less pay, angry? You get, yeah. You get what yeah. you pay for. Yeah. When you uh, get, when you're paying, imagine Gator Kirk, you're one of these big money donors that have donated seven figures to this program over the last couple of years. And this is the product you're getting. Yeah. You would be really mad yeah. if you had only donated 
the people that have donated 50 bucks, yeah, they're mad, but they don't feel like they have as much skin in the game. And I think at the end of the day, you're like, well, you're kind of getting what you paid for. We're only paying our head coach $100,000. So what what can we expect? Uh, he's getting paid like a high school coach. Uh, but yeah, when you're getting paid $10 million, that's part of the narrative. It becomes part of the narrative. Like he's the one that signed the contract. He's the one that flirted with Alabama. This is what happens when that, this, this, this is what happens when, when you, uh, entertain other jobs or when other jobs come call it. And I mean, at the end of the day, you'd rather be Mike Norvell than us. He's, he gets to cash those checks. So according to USA Today, there's five people that are paid more than Mike Norvell, and that would be Ryan Day, Lincoln Riley, Steve Sarkeesian, Dabo, and Kirby. Okay, so they're all – I feel like they're all having better years than Mike. Lincoln Riley, not great. Yeah. But still better than one in five. But that's the neighborhood he's keeping. Yes. So – And then – so to that point, like I'm, I'm almost less – bothered by that than I am the amount of money that they've spent on coordinators and what you're getting out of them where correct. Yeah. Yeah. You got a defensive coordinator who mainly runs man to man stuff. So it's not like he's creating these like really exotic, complicated game plans. That's tripping people up. And listen, I, I wasn't complaining about the defense at all last year. Cause it played awesome. Cause he had awesome players. So Adam Fuller, if he's got awesome players can be an awesome defensive coordinator, but seemingly if he doesn't have that talent, which is probably applies to most people can't do it, but you know, Mike Denbrock from Notre Dame apparently is the highest paid offensive coordinator, 2.1 million. Guy at Utah's making 1.85. Garrett Riley at Clemson's making 1.75. The guy at Penn State's making 1.6. Um, and Alex Atkins is making 1.25. Same as the guy from Kentucky and Wisconsin. Kyle Flood at Texas. The guy at making- Kentucky's making 1.25 million. Yeah. Hey, Good grief. Yeah. All right. Um, Kyle flood over at Texas is making a hundred thousand dollars more than Alex Atkins. Um, so there, there's some of that stuff. Defensive coordinators, LSU's coordinator, who's not doing great is making 2.5 million Michigan's coordinator. Wink Martindale's making 2.3 million. According to this list, Adam Fuller is the fourth highest paid defensive coordinator in the country. Danton Lynn from Southern Cal makes less than him. Glenn Schumann makes less than him. Jim Knowles at Ohio state makes less than him. Phil Parker at Iowa makes less than him. Quit Kowski at Texas makes less than him. Tosh Lapoe at Oregon. I'll stop. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's, it's again, over. that's that that's I think it comes with the territory. We and maybe we don't need to actually say the number, but when you're one of the highest paid uh coaches in the country or one of the highest paid coordinators in the country, I do think that factors into the anger when it looks like this. Like literally they could have saved a million dollars. It had me be the O-line coach. It could not be worse. They that doesn't mean it won't get better. Got Still got a half, second half of the season. But um, this offense has been an absolute disaster. And I think when you throw in the fact that, you know, people would say, um, yeah, I, I just think it's it, when you're paying the kind of money that Florida State's paying, you expect better results. That That's that's the deal. That's how life works. Um you know, Gene pays me a lot of money. If I wasn't generating these eyeballs and these clicks, Aslan, he would have made a mistake. But in all honesty, as we can both agree, I was the best decision Gene Williams ever made, right or wrong. Ira, and then you. Okay, so I was wrong. There's a huge, yeah. massive drop-off yeah, to you're, Jeff you're probably and me. Right. You're probably right. That's probably fair. That's um, probably fair. I was going to try to pull up DJ Durkin is like this. Uh, I mean, DJ Durkin is making 1.2. And Adam's making like a little bit under 2.1. Um, Auburn's got really good traditional statistics on everything across yeah. their team. They are the 33rd uh, gross offense, total yardage. Their total defense is 47th, but like they're only, they only have one more win than Florida State. So. Yeah, they turn it over a ton. That's their, that's their issue. Florida State hasn't, Florida State's just not been good. Auburn's been a little bit unlucky and, and turnover prone and he can't coach his quarterbacks well, but they have some real talent on that team. But okay. what, hey, this ain't this ain't yeah. wake up war eagle. <laughs> Good call. Uh, shout out to Pete Tingler, eighty one, the winner for the September gift bag from Cummins. We'll get that mailed out as uh, soon as I possibly can. Here, uh, again, every single week, warchant.com. Be a member. Get into the Renegade Express mailbag. Have an awesome question and have not been a winner yet, uh, and we'll feature you in this uh, segment. By the way, everybody who wins in the week uh, gets entered into a monthly drawing. But everybody who wins in the week gets entered to the grand prize drawing for that portable generator, portable power station. And I know my dad is like was chomping at the bit to have a generator. So maybe I need to have him get an account at WarChant and, and ask a question. And maybe he can be one of the guys that can be in the, the drawing. Although we'll eliminate family members. I, I joke. 